like to call the meeting to order, uh, or the public hearing to order. Will the clerk, please call the roll. His Honor the Mayor. Here. Councilor Reynolds. Here. Councilor McLaughlin. Councilor Emmons. Here. Councilor Walker. Here. Councilor Gosick. Here. Councilor Van Buren. Here. Councilor Cordino. Here. All present. The uh, public hearing is for proposed local law number three of year 2017, a local law adopting a new chapter in 181 uh, regarding personal flotation devices. There's nobody signed up to speak uh, for the local law. Would anyone in the audience like to speak? Seeing none, I'll take a motion to close the uh, public hearing. Councillor Walker, Councillor Van Buren. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. The public hearing is adjourned and public session will start at 7-15. I'd like to open the uh, public session. I have uh, three speakers signed up to speak. I ask that you uh, please state your name and address when you step up to the podium and try to keep your comments to under five minutes. First person signed up to speak is Ross Barbarino. Good evening. Um, my name is Ross Barbarino, and I live um, in the second ward in the city of Oswego. And the reason I'm here is to talk about a plumbing issue that I had back in October 17th of 2016. Uh, I came home that evening to my house, and I found that the city had done some work and, um, in front of my neighbor's house, and I learned that the part of the street was closed at that day. So I figured it had to be something serious. So I went into my house. I went to the kitchen, turned on the water in the kitchen sink, and the bathroom, shower, toilet, etc. Then I proceeded upstairs. I turned on the water in the bathroom sink upstairs. Everything was fine. Then I turned on the toilet, and I had a loud, grounding, grinding sound like a jackhammer. I had no water in my toilet tank. And uh, the sound just, was just horrible. It was loud. It made the whole house shake. So, so the next day, I called, the pull, I called um, Poland's Plumbing, and uh, they came to the house, and they said that there was dirt in the water line, which was done from the city. So uh, I couldn't, the, the problem could not be fixed that day because a part had to be ordered. So I was well, without a bathroom for two weeks upstairs and they said that it was due to um, the city doing the work. So I called my alderman, Mr. McLaughlin, I let him know what was going on and uh, he said he drove by that day and saw that work had been done in the city on that street where I live. On November 1st, Pullens came and fixed the plumbing. On the 6th, I received a bill from Pullens Plumbing for $231.83. On the 10th of November, I filed a claim with the city. On the 15th, I received a letter from Wright Insurance, which is the city's insurance, saying that the city was not at fault. So um, I, I, later on, I called Mr. Caracoli, the city attorney, and he told me on my phone, he said, I'm, quote, I do, not, I do have a memo going out to your alderman. I'm recommending that your claim be paid, but that it may take more, more, um, few more weeks to get paid on my answering machine, which I still have. And he said, if I don't hear anything from him within two weeks, to give him a call. Well, on January 19th, I had not received, I had not heard anything, so I did give, leave a message to him. And he told me that um, he had no authority to make that determination and that I had to take it up with my alderman or the council. All right. So, so I called Mr. McLaughlin after that, and I let him know about this, and I left a message. I hadn't heard anything from him after that fact. Early February, I called Mr. Van Buren. Um, he was the president of the council, and I explained my situation to him. I know I'm not in his ward, but he was very uh, understanding of my situation, and he said he could not guarantee that anything could be resolved from this. By mid-February, I went to the City Hall to make an appointment with the mayor, 
and the secretary suggested to me that I talk with the plumbing inspector, Mr. Tesserario, which I did. He took the information I had, and he said that he would get back to me. Um, by mid-March, I stopped by Pullen's Plumbing here in the Swigo, city of Swigo, and spoke with the owner, Mr. Bob Pullen, and he told me that he, he explained everything to Mr. Tesserario and that the city was at fault for what happened because of the water, dirt and the water line. And he said that I should contact my alderman so this issue can be presented at the council meeting. So I called again Mr. McLaughlin and I told him that the DPW informed him, informed me that it wasn't that, that what had happened. And he informed me, quote, it was an act of God the pipe broke because of the cold weather, end of quote. He was anno also annoyed that I contacted Mr. Tesserario about this issue. The following day, I received a message from Mr. McGrath, the clerk of the works here for the city. And he's told me in so many terms that I should not have turned on the kitchen sink first. I should have proceeded to go upstairs to the upper level of my house and turn on the water outlets there first because that would only have drawn in the water dirt from the water line in the city pipes. And he also said that he also dis dissected everything that I had written in my claim, almost trying to entrap me. And he was also annoyed that Mr. Tesserio had gotten involved. So that was two people that weren't too happy about that. And he left me with two points at the end of our conversation. Quote, this claim is not going anywhere, end of quote. And secondly, Poland's charged you for something you probably didn't need, end of quote. Now, I've, this has happened in October of last year, and I have not gotten anywhere with this. I'm back at square one from where I originally started, and I've been seeking reimbursement for the charges I had to pay Poland's plumbing. And that's what is bringing me here tonight, this evening, at the council meeting. I appreciate your time on this matter, and I would, I would hopefully that this would be resolved. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, Mr. Barbarino, I'm happy to bring your claim in front of the uh, whole council. Ultimately, they'll, okay. they'll vote on the claim, but I'm happy to bring that forward. I have, I have other documentation. I have Poland's invoice. I have a letter from the Wright Insurance. I have Mr. Caracoli's letter. We have all sent that. Me to, if, you, if there's anything you're needing, I have here in, yep. in my folder. We have all that. I'll give all of that to each counselor. Side and, all right. Uh, I appreciate we'll it. it. Again, uh, I mean, I usually don't bring up issues up normally. <laughs> you know, I, I take, you know, I live in my house. I take care of, I work. I take care of what needs to be done. I mind my business. I kind of try to maintain a low profile. Um, but again, this was something that I didn't expect to happen, and it did. Uh, again, I had to budget a little money to pay for this. Again, something that I had not anticipated to do. Take care of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry it took you to have to come here. So nice. Next speaker is Johnny Lee. Um, hello. Uh, I have a question about the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a question about the state of um, some of the um, information, the media and specifically. Um, I've lived in Oswego all my life. Um, you know, I have a job here. And I was um, wondering, um, I recognize that this is a local publication, but um, I believe that the PAL Times um, would by some be considered a little bias. Um, I recognize these are times politically where, um, you know, what information is real and what information is considered false or fraudulent. Sometimes the line between that is quite blurred. And um, I, for one, happen to be an avid reader of uh, Infowars.com, Breitbart, and some other publications that some um, other um, publications will deem irresponsible and false. But I think that. Um, the PAL Times, for one, should be um, maybe not required, but should be expected to present both sides of the spectrum. And I see that they have um, 
they are mostly concerned with um, left-leaning media such as the Washington Post, the New York Times. Um, I don't see them, you know, giving sides to the story that some of the right-wing publications have done. And I was just wondering if there was any way to um, maybe not necessarily hold the Pal Times responsible, but present the other sides of the argument for what I call the the um, the fail times is what I call them because I don't believe anything that they report. Um, thank you. I realize my question may be a little uh, hazardous. I didn't. Um, I wrote it down. I was um, just wondering in general what we could do to ensure that both sides of an issue are presented in our publications and that they are held responsible for perhaps reporting false information. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I. Uh who here that attends the regular meetings thinks Ben Cal in the Pell Times does a hell of a job? I think they do a fantastic job, and I, I don't think that anything that they are reporting is necessarily false, but I believe that both sides of the argument should be presented. No problem. Thank I'll, you. Uh, I'll let the Pell Times know uh, about your comments tonight. Thank you. Yep. Next is uh, Mercedes Neese. Nice. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to speak uh, to the council. And the mayor, thank you very much. We had a phenomenal weekend here in the city of Oswego. Uh, I do write some of my press releases <laughs> that I send to the Pal Times. Guilty. Um, so I just wanted to say we had a great weekend. Um, our side of the river, the uh, west side, we had the uh, railroad museum was open and we had our waterfront open house. I was texting the mayor early in the morning to please Facebook it, and he did. Thank you very much. Um, we did have folks that came from Utica just to take the lighthouse boat tour, which we were kind of offering. We didn't know for sure if we could uh, offer it or not, but it, we lucked out. And frankly, the high um, water situation, we did not need a ladder to get into the lower door. So that was kind of an interesting a benefit from all this. Um, I also wanted to mention that the museum is offering a history lecture series uh, for 2017 that focuses an awful lot on the Erie Canal as part of the 200th anniversary. It has been brought up here by Councilman Gozik um, on occasion, a couple times, and uh, we're certainly proud to be part of celebrating that commemoration. Um, so I'll make sure that I get that in the paper too. So everyone can look for that. Um, and I wanted to follow up on a conversation that John and I had uh, Sunday morning at um, the Masons were having a fundraiser for the Oswego Canal Play project that uh, we're working on with uh, John and the city and York Productions and Rick Sivers, which I think is moving forward very nicely. Um, I, there was some concern that maybe, you know, there was going to be some question if the Erie Canal Heritage Corridor was going to be uh, um, maybe not funded or supported by the present uh, administration, you know, federal administration. But I did speak with Peter Wiles, um, who is a canal commissioner, and he assured me that things are go, uh, go and very supportive. Um, I do serve on the Canal New York Board, which is a business uh, and organization uh, that supports businesses along the canal. And uh, we do hope to continue our involvement with the canal folks as this long anniversary continues for the next 10 years. So thank you for your support. We have quite a year set out before us and we look forward to having another successful season with the community and the city support. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, there's Cities was the final speaker signed up. Would anyone else like to address the council? Seeing none, I will close the uh, public session and the regular meeting starts in one minute. <laughs> meeting to order, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Or please call the roll. 
His Honor the Mayor. Here. Councillor Reynolds. Here. Councillor McLaughlin. Here. Councillor Emmons. Here. Councillor Walker. Here. Councillor Gosick. Here. Councillor Van Buren. Here. Councillor Cordino. Here. All present. Uh, thank you. Under the Mayor's report, I'd just like to mention that the first night of the end of the uh, Farmer's Market is uh, this Thursday, May 25th, from 4.30 to 8 p.m. If you have uh, any questions, please call the uh, Oswego Fulton Chamber of Commerce. Also, uh, the Oswego Veterans Council Memorial Celebration, Memorial Day Celebration will be uh, next Monday, which is Memorial Day, May 29th at 11 a.m. at the Veterans Memorial Park. Do any of the councilors have anything to add under the mayor's report? Councilor Gozik? Um, yeah, again, I just wanted two things. I just wanted to um, mention thank people that came out for the uh, Masonic fundraiser this weekend for the Canal Theater Project. Um, it's moving ahead well, as um, Mercedes said. Um, but more importantly, what I really wanted to point out was um, with everything going on this weekend, the H. Lee White Open House was great. Um, but also they had the um, first annual Bemelman's Festival. And um, I, don't know, I know a few people were there. I've seen Councilor Reynolds there, and uh, I'm sure others stopped in. But it was a huge success. And they had a great day for the kites, um, for the kite fest in the morning. They had activities and entertainment all day um, for a, you know, family oriented for all old the young. Um, so it really went very well, and uh, I just wanted to commend everyone who was behind that. I thought that was um, hopefully the beginning of uh, something really great that's going to continue um, in the future. So I just wanted to tip my hat to everybody involved with that. Thank you. Any other comments? See none. Or please call resolution 181. Approved minutes, Common Council meeting held May 8th, 2017. Councillor Emmons, Councillor Reynolds. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 182. Appoint Commissioner of Deeds. Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Gosick. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 183. Approve use of public space. Amy Penfield, owner of property located at 118 East Mohawk Street, in order to erect a new covered porch. Councilor Walker, Councilor McLaughlin. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 184. Approve use of public space. Amy McKean, owner of property located at 87 East Utica Street, in order to install a fence. Councilor Walker. Councilor McLaughlin. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 185. Approve use of public space, Oswego Public Library, in order to host a demonstration of trucks to be held on Wednesday, August 2nd, 2017. Councilor Gosick, Councilor Reynolds. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 186. Approve use of city properties for the Oswego Bookmobile Summer Program. Councilor Van Buren. Councilor Gosick. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 187. Approve use of Christopher Field for girls' fast pitch softball program. Councilor Cordino. Councilor Van Buren. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 188. Grant permission to arrive to use the, ba use the bandstand for their annual Ride for Ramps fundraiser to be held Saturday, June 3rd, 2017. Councillor Van Buren, Councillor Reynolds, any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. 
Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 189. Accept donation of a gazebo from spectacular sheds to be placed in Breitbeck Park. Uh, Councillor Reynolds, Councillor Emmons. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 190. Grant variance of the noise ordinance to David Thompson, proprietor of Gibby's Irish Pub, located at 8 West 2nd Street, during the months of May through September. Councilor Reynolds, Councilor Evans, any comments? Or please call the roll. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 191. Approve proposed local law number three of the year 2017, a local law adopting a new chapter 181 personal flotation devices. Councilor Gozik, Councilor Walker. Any comments? Councilor Gozik. Yeah, just briefly, um, I just wanted to give a little uh, on this for the background of people out there don't know. Um, this uh, personal flotation device law um, is designed to promote water safety on the river, especially for fishermen. Um, from Utica Street up to the, or excuse me, south to the um, High Dam or the Varick Dam. And um, again, works on other levels as well. I think it's going to help us assert more local control over um, the river. And hopefully, um, we'll continue to see um, numbers rising as we get to the peak season, the fishing season, that um, we we'll continue to see more and more people come in here um, to enjoy a swig on fish. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, any other comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 192. Authorize Mayor to execute the short environmental assessment form for the Route 48 emergency slope stabilization and highway repairs project. Councillor Cordino, Councillor Emmons. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 193. Authorize Mayor to execute an agreement with 3 plus 1 services to provide a financial analysis and further authorize transfer of funds from the contingent account to, the, to pay for same. Councillor Walker. Councillor Cordino. Any comments? <laughs> Please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. No. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. No. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 5 2. Clerk, please call resolution 194. Authorize Mayor to enter a five year lease agreement with Oswego Empire Prop LLC for the rental assistance program. Councillor Gosick. Councillor McLaughlin, any comments? Please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yeah. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 195. Authorized submission of the home rule request authorizing the enactment of legislation to extend the additional sales and compensating use tax of 1%. Gozik, Councillor Van Buren. Any comments? Or please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Or please call resolution 196. Approve fee schedule for the fish cleaning stations. Councillor Walker. Councillor Emmons. Any comments? Councillor Walker. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make an amendment on this. Instead of $10 per hour, I'd like to put, uh, put $1 per fish. Second? Second. Councillor Emmons, uh, please call the roll to amend. Councillor Walker. Yes, to amend. Councillor Gosick. Yes, to amend. Councillor Van Buren. Yes, to amend. Councillor Cordino. Yes, to amend. Councillor Reynolds. Yes, to amend. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes, to amend. Councillor Emmons. Yes, to amend. Resolution to amend passes 7-0. Uh, clerk, please call resolution 
Well, first I should say, out of the uh, conversation about what to do and how to charge, how to institute a rate on the fish cleaning station, we, uh, that caused us to look at what else is down at the marina. And uh, set, we were assessing the uh, fees for the boat launch uh, for uh, folks who launched their boat in the marina. And uh, it really doesn't make any sense to me to charge city residents $10 a day to launch their boat at a marina that they already pay for in the form of their uh, property taxes. So uh, later on in this, what I'm requesting is the council, once we get through uh, resolution 202, we will waive the rules and we have a resolution prepared uh, that will uh, allow city residents to launch their boat for free from the marina. And when we get to that resolution, I have some of the financial impact that, that has, we can discuss. Uh, but for now, the clerk, please call your, resolution. I'm sorry, Your Honor, point of order. I, I just want to be clear that the uh, Councilor Walker's uh, amendment, the first resolved clause should read, resolve that request to charge a $1 per fish fee for use of the fish cleaning stations is approved. Correct. Okay. Uh, so now, will clerk, please call resolution 196 as amended. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 197. Approve fee schedule for non compliant water meters. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Gosick. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 198. Approve transfer of funds from the contingent account to street maintenance personal services account. Councilor Emmons, Councilor Gozik. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gozik? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Please call resolution 199. Approve transfer funds from the contingent account to code enforcement personal services account. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Walker. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 200. Approve ten attendance at the basic laboratory course to be held June 11th to 16th, 2017 in Morrisville, New York. Request of Ken Sh sure. Sherbel, Waste Water Department. Councilor Walker, Councilor McLaughlin. Any comments? Or please call the vote. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Resolution 201. Approve attendance at the New York State Labor Relations Association annual conference to be held July 18th to 21st, 2017 in Saratoga Springs, New York. Request of Nancy Stereo, personnel director. Councilor Cordino, Councilor Emmons. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 202. Approve attendance at the Train the Trainer program to be held June 1, 2017 in Burysville, New York. Request of Randall Griffin, Fire Chief. Councilor Walker, Councilor McLaughlin. Any comments? Please call the roll. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Emmons? Yes. Resolution passes 7 0. Clerk, please call resolution 203. Waive rules of Common Council to present resolution number 204 from the floor without committee consideration. Councilor Van Buren, Councilor Emmons. Any comments? Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Walker? Yes. Councilor Gosick? Yes. Councilor Van Buren? Yes. Councilor Cordino? Yes. Councilor Reynolds? 
Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Remmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. For please call resolution 204. Approve fee schedule for boat launch at Wright's Landing. Councilor Walker, Councilor McLaughlin. So, uh, like I said before, um, this resolution will uh, make boat launches for city residents free, so you can bring your boat to the marina, uh, launch it from Wright's Landing, and if you uh, prove at the booth uh, that you are a city resident, and by city resident, resident we mean that your boat is registered to a city address, uh, that you'll be able to launch your boat for free. Just to outline the financial impact, down at the marina you can either buy a season pass or a daily pass. The season pass allows you to launch your boat in an unlimited amount of times throughout the entire season. As far as city residents are concerned, uh, their season pass costs $50. We take in $1,700 worth of season passes from city residents alone. Um, and in addition to that $1,700, the booth takes in off of daily passes, so people who come in and pay $10 a day. We have no real way to track whether they're city residents or non-city residents, but we do know that that booth takes in $17,546, at least in, in 2016, uh, from daily passes. Again, at seventeen five, dollars there's no way to determine non-residents and city residents, um, but just so the numbers, in my opinion, Certainly, they're not all city residents, so I don't think it's a huge. Uh, uh, I don't think there's a huge financial impact that will uh, significantly hurt the city, and I think it's a worthwhile uh, proposal to allow people who are already paying for the marina by way of their city taxes to uh, launch their boat for the marina if they already pay for. Any comments from the city? Council Member Block. One thing I'd like to see, maybe we had a resolve in there that uh, anybody already buying a season launch pass be refunded their money. I agree. So is it, that's a motion to amend the resolution? Yes. Councilor Van Buren, second. Clerk, please call the roll to amend resolution 204. Councilor Walker. Yes, to amend. Councilor Gosick. Yes, to amend. Councilor Van Buren. Yes, to amend. Councilor Cordino. Yes to amend. Councillor Reynolds. Yes to amend. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes to Councillor amend. Councillor Emmons. Yes to amend. Resolution to amend passes 7 0. Or please call the resolution for no other comments from the City Council. Councillor Walker. Okay. Uh, years ago, we ended up with the Marine. And I brought this up before, and the council back then did not agree with doing Town of Scriber does it for their residents. I said, why can't the city of Oswego do it for our residents, which they do pay for in tax dollars. So I'm very glad you brought this forth. Thank you. Any other comments? Or please call resolution 204 as amended. Councilor Walker. Yes. Councilor Gosick. Yes. Councilor Van Buren. Yes. Councilor Cordino. Yes. Councilor Reynolds. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Any unfinished business to come before the council? Councillor Van Buren. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Walker. Clerk, please call the roll. Councillor Walker. Yes. Councillor Gosick. Yes. Councillor Van Buren. Yes. Councillor Cordino. Yes. Councillor Reynolds. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Emmons. Yes. Resolution passes 7-0. Meeting is adjourned.